And, and I will admit, I, even though, you know, I'm not, I like three pointers. So I'm not, I'm not a hater of the three point revolution, if you will. Uh, but I do think you got to be careful and you don't want the game to become all threes, right? But Rob, I got to say this. Uh, no lead is safe nowadays. I mean, you got to really be up by about 26 or more. With uh, five minutes to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and I'll be honest, I think that makes it more exciting. Like watching that game last night, and Golden State led by double digits for basically the last 30 minutes. Not the whole, you know, the Lakers pulled within seven, pulled within nine or eight, but Golden State will push it back up. But I'm telling you, man, as a guy that picked the Warriors, so like we always talk about when you pull for your picks, I was never really comfortable to the because it's just any no lead is safe. Right. It's incredible. Now it's 15, 12, and again, this is early, but I'm just saying even late, Rob. I mean, the game uh, four, Rob G, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that the game when Golden State was up by, no, that was game three. They were up by 11 midway through the second quarter, which again, that's still early. But then within seven minutes, they were down by 11. And so it it is amazing how quickly these leads vanish. And I got to be, again, I think that is a good thing. Like, it keeps the suspense. It keeps the drama for the most part. And so I think that's one thing that's been exciting about these playoffs. But let's stick with the Lakers and the Warriors, Rob. And um, Steve Kerr made some comments after game four when the Lakers went up 3-1. Uh, he made some comments that that he called he used the word gamesmanship. And I Rob G, let me know if we have the sound. But he basically was saying that the Lakers are flopping, and that is leading to a lot of the foul calls on the Warriors. And Rob, in the wins, three wins for the Lakers, they are about about, I say this because I'm I'm not exactly sure on the exact number. But I think it's plus 51 on free throws uh, attempts when they, in their three wins, in their two losses, they're plus one. Now, some people would say, oh, that's that shows, yeah, that is correct. Okay, so that shows that the referee, well, the Lakers got to the line more than any team in the league and and fouled less than any other team in the league. And then the Warriors got to the line. They were one of the worst in the league at getting to the line. So, some of that is the way these two teams play. We see the Warriors shooting a lot of jumpers, not attacking the rim all the time. Right. So that, yeah. But Kerr mentioned, hey, the Lakers are great at gamesmanship, and they're, you know, I don't know if you use the word flopping. And then the next game, Dar- Darvin Ham yesterday at, in the first quarter interview, at the end of the first quarter, said to Chris Haynes, hey, we don't teach flopping. We play hard nose back. I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, he, he was like, well, he, he didn't, he didn't, but he didn't want to hear that. Back. Right. He right. didn't want to hear that. And I, LeBron was asked about it after the game, Robbie. Here's what he said. It's just not a, a team that, you know, goes out there and looking for, for, for flopping opportunities. It's just not us. It's never been, it's actually never been in any team that I've played on in my 20 years where we've been a flopping team. Rob? You got a comment on I can go. Yeah, you can go first. I mean, I, I was going to say, uh, go ahead. Let me hear what you have to say. And then I'll, well, uh, I think Kerr used the right word gamesmanship because that's what it is, and that's what he's engaging in. Rob, what he was doing, and it was smart and it worked, he was planting a seed. Right, for the officials. Yes, absolutely. Who did he play for? Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson used to always do that when they played the Knicks and other teams in the playoffs. Complain about the officiating to plant a seed. And that's what Kerr was doing. Basically say, hey, watch the flopping, you know, and they ended up getting a favorable whistle yesterday. And now what I'll say, Rob, is the, I Darvin Ham and LeBron James aren't lying when they say we don't teach flopping, you know, none of my teams have been flopper. Yeah. Does Darvin Ham or any of the coaches LeBron's played for 
Or do they have a 15 minutes in practice where they teach you how to flop? <laughs> do they have film on flopping? Do they run flopping drills? No. But do players flop both for the Lakers and the Warriors and every team? Dudes are flopping. They can call it selling the car, whatever you would. That's fine because that's what you're doing. But it's semantics. They're flopping. And LeBron is a historic flopper. But he said he's never been on a team where they flopped in 20 years. Well, he's. I agree with him in that he's never been on a team that taught flopping, that saw flopping. But it doesn't mean that they'd flop. That's they fine. Flop, right. But you flop. And, and, and again, it ain't everybody on every team. But certain players flop. I think, Rob, certain players, that it is now instinctive to the point where if Darvin Ham had said to his players, let's say he said heading into game six, look, guys, the refs are on notice for flopping, so let's not do it. I know some of y'all, you know, we don't teach that. We don't really like it anyway, but y'all doing it, but let's not do it. Rob, I bet you dudes would still do it instinctively. They're so it used to doing instinctive. it. instinctive, right? Like you get hit, you automatically exaggerate the call, the, the, the bump. Just like, and this is, look, the Warriors, like I said, they're not, they, they're just as bad as everybody else. When Jordan Poole or even sometimes Steph or Clay, if they're shooting Draymond, they putting those legs out. They're seeking contact. That's the same thing. So this is gamesmanship by Steve Kerr. But for any of these players, and co- flopping, unfortunately, they're trying to root it out. Only way to really root it out, Rob, is you just stop calling this stuff. Because they've talked about rules and all that and texts and all that. But it's still very much a part of the game. Uh, yes. Yes. And it ain't going nowhere either, Chris. They've tried. You're right. They tried to uh, put a cap on the flopping and all that stuff. Uh, but I, I think it, you're right too, as well about Steve Kerr. That that wasn't that was for the officials. Yep. Uh, also, Chris, put that out there. We're the defending champs. Give us some respect. Look at what they're doing to us. Right. <laughs> I mean that that's. And it's weird to hear them, but they're they're in a hole. They're they're they feel like they need a little help, and so they're hoping. And you said it last night, right? Did they get a call? Look, Rob, that game last night, and I like it because it wasn't brutal. It wasn't nineteen nineties Knicks uh, Rockets, but it was physical, and I'm here for it, Rob. Were you like I, they let guys play so? Draymond could be a little physical. Looney and 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 some of the Lakers, if they wanted to, can get a little some bump in here and there, and they let them play. I don't want I, I don't, I don't want, want Draymond don't, to foul out. Do you? No, and I don't want right. whistles all the time, Chris. Right. I want to see some basketball, and it's okay. You're right. We're not turning back the clock and trying to hurt people and all that. But I would like to see a little resistance. Yes. Is that fair? Resistance. Thank you. Not matador defense, not letting people go to the hole whenever they want and just step aside. I, that I don't want to see. Right, right. So, I look, I I thought the game, I liked it last night. I mean, I, I Rob think the G, Warriors may Rob G, of course, said he wants gotten... Draymond to fall out, right? There you go. <laughs> I understand. Of course Rob he does, G is Draymond sick. Draymond does a Rob, good job Rob, on AD. Rob G is sick over, even though the Lakers are up and all they got to do is win one of the last two games. He's sick, Chris, because he he just he's Where are not, you at on this game six? Right, Rob G. Be honest. Honestly, I'm not feeling great about it. I know. Really? Yeah, well, because A D. If if he's not a hundred percent. Whatever he yeah, is. Yeah. And 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 in I think Chris mentioned today on TV that even um, he's gonna play, right? But I yeah. would not be surprised if he comes in very tentative. That he's, you know, worried about really banging again because he doesn't want to get clipped in the side of the head again. That's well, what I'm worried about. It is one of two things could happen. And I did say on television, first things first today, that, Rob, I think he's going to be tentative. I think he's going to be a bit hesitant. And if I'm the Warriors, uh, and again, you hope you get a, the refs let you play, I'm getting physical with him. 
I'm trying to put into his mind a little fear. Because he doesn't like playing physical. That's why he's never wanted to play center. Even though he's essentially played center. You know, like, he doesn't want to be play that physical game. And so, and also, Rob, I think, and I say subconsciously, I don't think he would do this purposely. But I think subconsciously he could use the injury, maybe only if it if it's a rough start, but maybe from the get-go. Who knows? But I think it could become a crutch for him, where it's like if he has that mediocre or bad game that people kind of expect from him every you know few games, he's got kind of an excuse. Oh, I'm you know I shoot, I got hit upside the head. I. I Darn near had a concussion. And I think you're right. The whole notion of, you know, if things don't go right, you could use yep. that. Yep. Like if things don't go right or if he has a stinker or whatever, well, I, I, I came back. I, just like the whole idea, Chris, no gamesmanship about whether or not he's going to play. They, did they really have to announce today that he was playing for sure? That's interesting. That's I'm an serious. That's question. D- 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 like, I'm surprised. You didn't have to. You're you right. Didn't have I mean, to. you can say it, it's good for us, the media, to know, but that 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 shouldn't be the Lakers' concern. Why should they be telling them that he's playing? I, I, I that's a great, that's a good point. I, Unless he's not. <laughs> right, right. That might. But be But you're right. Like I, I agree with you. I hadn't even thought about it. I mean, I'm just looking at it as the news. Like, hey, we want to know. But right. You're but right. I, I just, I was surprised when Rob G said they announced that he's playing. I was just stunned. Like they would just like. Nah, that's Tomorrow fair. could be game time you. decision. They could have yep. put that out there. Game time that decision. That would have been smart because the Warriors are definitely, you know, I'm not saying they would have definitely changed their lineup, no, no, but they right. are definitely making lineup changes based on AD. The way they play is based on him. And so now, Rob, the other, and I quickly want your, your point, your thought. Nick Wright brought up a point, and I rarely say this about Nick, but I thought it was interesting and a good point. I'm, I'm joking, but that's my man. But it was a, it was a good point. Um, he said he thought initially what I said about AD may and be being tentative, using this as an excuse for a, a bad game or whatever. But he said with all of the criticism with, with the, the TNT crew and Stephen A going at him the way they did, he thinks – AD might be motivated to prove people wrong. I, I just – you shouldn't need that. I, I well, just, right, right, but you I, know who we're dealing with. Do you Do you think that's a possibility? I just – he's had other opportunities where people have been calling him names and all kinds of stuff before, street clothes. And when he went out there and played injured, Chris, remember that was him trying well, to – He was trying, right. He was right. trying. Am I right or wrong? He was trying. exactly your He, he was right. trying to prove, oh, no – Dude shouldn't have never been out there for five minutes. Remember he was hobbling, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Right? We all said it. We both we we said it. Like what he doesn't belong to be out there, but that was him trying to prove people wrong about him. And that was a mistake. Because he wasn't well, healthy. Well, if he's not hurt though, and he feels that same way tomorrow, that could benefit the Lakers. Again, I'm sticking by my take. I, I we've seen him for a long time. I just think I think Rob, there you have to fight through some situations where you might not feel right or the game is just tough. And if you don't, you got to decide I'm fighting through this, no matter how hard it gets. And sometimes I think some guys say, you know what? I'm not fighting through it. I don't feel like fighting through it tonight. And I think AD does that sometimes. And I think tomorrow, you know, they got a game. I'm not saying they don't want to win tomorrow, obviously. But they got a game to play with. And there is a difference. Right? That's one reason we see a lot of times a team look different when their backs are against the wall. They don't, or they a don't team want to play that's that up game. 2-0 or something, right? And you you don't mean to relax up 2-0 or 2-1 or whatever it may be, 3-1. But you don't have the same sense of urgency as the team that's do or die. So it'll be interesting which AD we see tomorrow.